there's two kinds of dangers. One is that we've arranged a society based on science and technology in which nobody understands anything about science and technology. And this combustible mixture of ignorance and power, sooner or later, is going to blow up in our faces. I mean, who is running the science and technology in a democracy if the people don't know anything about it? And the second reason that um, I'm worried about this is that science is more than a body of knowledge. It's a way of thinking, a way of skeptically interrogating the universe with a fine understanding of human fallibility. If, if we are not able to ask skeptical questions, to interrogate those who tell us that something is true, to be skeptical of those in authority, then we're up for grabs for the next charlatan, political or religious who comes ambling along. It, it's a thing that Jefferson lay great stress on. It wasn't enough, he said, to enshrine some rights in a, in a constitution or a bill of rights. The people had to be educated and they had to practice their skepticism and their education. Otherwise, we don't run the government. The government runs us. Wow. Um, it, it still boggles my mind how we went from those very eloquent, beautiful words from Carl Sagan describing science as something to question, something to interrogate, something to think about skeptically when it comes to understanding our human consciousness on this worldly plane that we all share. And we exchanged that all for cheap PR corporate slogans that mean nothing else but obey with trust the science. Yeah, fair to say our IQ is definitely going down the toilet. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Lukadowski here of wearechange.org, and we have a lot of absolutely important information to get into today, as there is a plethora of very important news to get into today that is very complex that we're going to be doing our best to simplify for you. This as society is becoming more bifurcated by the day, as there are some clear warning signs that you should be looking at. And we're going to be focusing on that, plus a lot more, all on this independent media broadcast. But before we begin, if you like the shirt that I'm wearing right now, you can get it on the bestpoliticalshirts.com. And also, shouts out to B. Kashi, who of course was the one that found that very incredible clip by Carl Sagan in his latest highlights. We of course will be linking his channel down in the description below you could always find him on twitter at b e underscore cashy and the compilation videos that he does are, are, are truly great the old clips that he finds are definitely worth introspecting about especially documenting the many oxymorons in our society oxymorons like the Inflation Reduction Act, which, as we told you, is going to be doing the exact opposite of what it says it's going to do, just like almost every other government act. And now CBS News even joins us in this current reality with their bombshell headline, which reads like it's out of idiocracy, saying, quote, One thing the Inflation Reduction Act may not do, lower inflation. <laughs> and gee whiz, who would have thought? printing money out of thin air, spending money on programs, giving tax credits to rich people so they could buy electric vehicles, intervening in the free market, interrupting it, regulating it, taxing it, while literally devaluing the purchasing power of the dollar. Gee, ha, ah, who would have thought that that would be not good for inflation? As of course, today we're also finding out that the tax credit in the Inflation Reduction Act for $7,500 was just met with the majority of electric car producers in this country, Ford and GM, raising their prices the same exact amount. Gee, wonder why they would, why, why would they do that? Well, because they're being subsidized by you, the taxpayer, and they know how much people are willing to pay to buy their vehicles just at a price that they could get away with for their own personal profit. And now with a tax credit of $7,500, that money is going to be going directly to them. Who's going to be footed the bill? As will multinational corporations, big banks, and unaccountable government bureaucrats profit off of the decisions that are going to be intervening in your life more and more? Well, who's going to be paying for this? You are, as we're finding out from many financial analysts that the Inflation Reduction Act will actually be costing Americans, specifically people in the middle class, $20 billion in new taxes. This as we're also paying for 87,000 new IRS agents that of course will make sure you're giving your pound of flesh to Molik. Yeah, fair to say you're being screwed as I think this image perfectly represents exactly what's happening right now with an ever so desperate American middle and lower class, which 
is only getting robbed more by the seedy, nasty government bureaucrats. They're seeing this as an opportunity to, one, treat people like idiots by creating an act that does the exact opposite of what it purports to do. And uh, they should have called this bill, put your hands up and empty your pockets, Bill, since that's exactly what is happening right now. And that's not the only thing to worry about as an average American, as of course, energy prices are also going up on the heels of disastrous energy policies being implemented by this Biden administration that, of course, is hiking the price of energy. This as the United States has dropped their output when it comes to natural gas. In Europe, gas prices have hit another record record high, and uh, they don't look like they're going to be lowering anytime soon. This, as Business Insider is describing a, quote, perfect storm that is going to be rocking the continent's energy systems, and with German officials even warning their citizens of upcoming draconian energy regulations, with firewood and many stoves being sold out throughout the country, we could expect, I think, some major upheavals in the next upcoming weeks and months. Not just in Europe, which is definitely guaranteed to rise in turbulence because of the very dangerous geopolitical situation unfolding in Ukraine right now, where essentially Europeans in the West is paying more for gas this winter because of politicians' ambitions for power and influence. But there's also signals for very significant problems in China, where their housing market is soon expected to crash. And who thought making up millions of new homes just to prop up your GDP and your economic numbers wasn't going to work? And of course, more economic problems for China signal more economic problems for the United States, as of course these two economies are very interlinked together. Thank you, Mr. Rockefeller and Kissinger for setting this up, as we're dealing with a hell of a problem that's only going to get worse from here. We're going to be talking about that plus a lot more all later on today on a separate video on our separate platform, specifically LukeUncensored.com, where we want to get into the news of Jill Biden. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Dr. Biden testing positive, even though she took four procedures, procedures that many Americans are getting settlements from. As if you listened to LukeUncensored.com, if you were a member, and if you had a normie job, you might be eligible for a settlement, as of course the United States just finally relieved and ended some of their discriminatory medical policies. There's still a, a lot of serious issues to get into. We're going to be talking about that, as well as Pfizer's veterinary drug that killed a whole bunch of cows in Germany. Yeah, this, this story, absolutely crazy. We're going to be getting into all of that in our virtual safe space quasi-secret society. Not really so, as of course you could sign in for less than 50 cents a day on LukeUncensored.com. We're going to also continue to answer all of your questions. I think we have like three or four of them left through the AMA that we were doing all specifically. Again, you want to do this? You want to be a part of this? You want to be on this forum? You want to be a part of a group of dedicated individuals working to be the best versions of themselves? Sign up right now on LukeUncensored.com. Click the link down in the description below and find out all the information you need to be a part of our group. Now, continuing the conversation. Now, um, I think it's fair to say that financially things are, are very turbulent and... Um, Politically, they're just as turbulent, especially with all the latest news we're getting from the former president of the United States that was raided by the Federal Bureau of Investigations, which has been becoming more and more politically involved for the benefit of the power establishment in Washington, D.C., usually in favor of the Democratic Party. And uh, I think it's fair to say there's been a lot of backlash uh, against this raid, even from Democratic establishment figures, as, of course, this signals some very troubling signs ahead. The latest developments that we're finding out from this raid is that the Justice Department is asking the judge to keep the warrant and the affidavit sealed as they're citing an investigation that is still ongoing against the former president of the United States. We also heard from other sources that the Biden administration is pushing for a potential indictment against the former president of the United States, which of course would escalate this already very dangerous partisan situation. This says, of course, a lot of people are very skeptical from this power establishment that many people accuse of abusing their power as of course they're saying that they clearly have something to hide here as of course clearly they don't want the details of what's happening here going out there to the general public and from my perspective, this definitely seems like a cop out. It definitely seems like the government and the FBI have a lot of things that they're hiding here, since, of course, they're not coming forward with any real information. 
It's a lot of hearsay. It's a lot of rumors, lots of allegations, but, but no evidence. And they're asking to hide any potential information that, of course, would shed light to what's going on here. As, of course, I think it's pretty clear the judge involved in this case is very political. The hearing to unseal the affidavit, to unseal the warrant, is going to be taking place two days from now on August 18th. As it definitely looks like the legal system is definitely stacked against Donald Trump, especially with the judge proceeding over this case that, of course, donated to Barack Obama. He also has some very sinister connections to a lot of very seedy, nasty, intelligence-connected individuals that did horrible things that we can't even mention here. We're also finding out today that the FBI just returned three passports of the former president of the United States. Why did they take his his passports? Well, again, a lot of this is absolutely nonsensical. A lot of this absolutely makes no sense at all. And until we hear a detailed explanation what actual evidence provided to the American people, I think it's our best interest interest to be skeptical of the power establishment since, you know, they of course have a knack of abusing power, just like most governments do. And I think more than ever during these tumultuous times, we need accountability, we need transparency, and we need people held accountable for their actions from both sides. But it's clear one side is being more egregious than the other, more aggressive and using institutions to go after the other one. This says the FBI is making very aggressive moves against Republicans, and the other side is complaining about mean emails. I'm not kidding you. This as of course, Trump is even warning about the, quote, terrible things that will happen. And I, I think it's fair to say for those that have been warning about a domestic civil conflict, that these warnings, these escalations are only getting crazier from here, putting all of us in a very unsafe social political situation. This as the FBI is even warning about a dirty bomb threat, which seems uh, bewildering to a lot of individuals who are asking themselves, what's next? WMDs. And again, after the raid, we have to understand that Trump has gotten a lot of support. A lot of the candidates that he has backed in primaries have won. There's another major primary vote happening right now in Wyoming that the whole of the United States is paying attention to as the congressional seat for Liz Cheney, an individual who is known to be the polar opposite of Donald Trump, is in question. What's going to be happening here is, of course, Donald Trump is supporting her opponent. Well, we're going to be keeping a close eye on that as well as all the crazy escalations that we could only hope de-escalate and stop expanding and growing from here. But uh, I think it's fair to say that that, that's most likely not going to happen. It's good to be hopeful and optimistic, but uh, in these situations, I think the reality of it is uh, just uh, too in our face. That's just my opinion. That's my perspective. What do you think? Do you think I'm wrong? Let me know why down in the comment section below. I always appreciate the constructive criticism. I always appreciate the ability to be able to discuss political ideas in an open platform. And we hope to facilitate that here on this independent media broadcast. We have deeper conversations down the rabbit hole. We go even further on LukeUncensored.com. That video is going to be available for you right now just by clicking the link down in the description below. And because you sign up for for membership, because you buy t-shirts, because you share these videos. I am here. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. And this is why I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org. 